coming up on the season finale of Hoosier Sports Night. Indiana baseball picked up a crucial non-conference victory. And women's tennis closes out their regular season. This is Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to the season 25 finale of Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Hank Joseph. And I'm Samantha Condra. Samantha, I can't believe, can I call you Sam now? Is yes, that okay? You can. <laughs> yeah, um, can't believe that that's the last time. That I know, gonna say last that. time we're going to say that. It's, it's, I'm a little emotional, it's fine. Let's just try and get through this one. Okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indiana softball got swept by the Nebraska Cornhuskers this past weekend. Our IUS TV sports reporter Ryan Costello has the recap. After winning 23 games in a row, Indiana softball has dropped five out of their last six games, including getting swept at home by Nebraska this past weekend. If the Hoosiers want to get back to their winning ways, they need to string clutch hits together. And that's where we need to get better offensively. But I, this is a great hit. We are still great hitting ball club, right? In that game one, I think we still had three balls that left the yard. Uh, we just didn't clutch up enough. We had our opportunities. We had bases loaded uh, earlier in the game. We had first and second earlier in the game. And then again, you're down to you know your final out there and you got the game winning run at the plate. So not more, much more you can ask for with the exception of a timely hit. And we just didn't get it. The inability to get timely hits was due to the pitching of Nebraska redshirt senior, Courtney Wallace able to work off the plate you know and so we were chasing a lot of pitches that were off the plate when you're able to and then we'll take a pitch down and in and then we take a pitch down and out you know if you're hunting one side of the plate you got to be able to attack and I think that was a difference uh, is just you know, she had good command and you know she's a veteran uh, you know she's a good athlete out there and um, you know her coming back I think she had a COVID year coming back I mean so yeah, they have a lot of veteran kids in their roster and their lineup and I think that shows the difference of the way they competed at times when the backs were against the wall and the way we competed at times. It was the Hoosiers' inability to get outs, their defensive mistakes, and the pitching of Courtney Wallace that caused them to lose all three games against Nebraska. We have enough evaluated experience that we got to play like veterans, but you saw that even that last at bat, you know, I think they were trying to pitch around Bree a little bit, and we're not sticking to the game plan. We're a little bit too far off the plate, you know. I think then AP a little bit too far off the plate, you know, even Cora on that at bat. You know, I just felt like we were too far off the plate to be able to make her feel uncomfortable, and we got to do a better job getting on the plate and being comfortable there. During their win streak, it was clear how comfortable Indiana was at the plate, but now they seem hesitant. After playing five games in five days, Indiana will get some much needed rest. Well, I think what will clean that up is getting some rest. You know, I think that was quite the grind, you know, being on the road at Minnesota, home against Louisville, hopping on a bus, going up and playing Notre Dame. You know, they had the, the week off and then they chartered in here, you know, and, and no excuses, right? Uh, don't mistake that for any mistake or any excuses, but I think some rest will be good for this group. I think it'll be good for all of us. From Bloomington, Ryan Costello, IUS TV Sports. The Hoosiers will look to get back on track in conference play when they travel to New Jersey to play Rutgers in a three-game series this weekend. Indiana baseball picked up their first ranked win since March 4th on Tuesday, defeating the Louisville Cardinals 7-3. Our Kelsey Dennehy has the recap. Ranking has no names for Indiana baseball, who took down the 10th ranked Louisville 7-3 at home on Tuesday. And the method to their madness? Youthful depth. Suffocate your young players by never getting them on the field, then you have guys that never grow up. And if they don't grow up, then, you're, then, you're, then your system doesn't work. So. One of those young players being freshman pitcher Ethan Phillips, capturing the mound for over four innings. I think that most days, um, I have something that will compete and like I said, you know, I going into this I just had the confidence that I was able to be here and I, I was just waiting for the opportunity to play on, you know, the same field as a team that's nationally ranked. And Indiana is now 19-1 and one in home play, and the Cardinals are no exception. The Hoosiers forced seven pitching changes on Louisville throughout the entirety of the matchup while obtaining nine strikeouts of their own. I mean, all we're trying to do is win, and running the base as hard is, is a big way to win, and that's, as you saw tonight, that's just what we did and created a lot of runs. That five-run third inning and a stellar pitching performance is what captured the Hoosiers' win, a balance the team has been building on all season. We've worked really hard at that. And the kids have done a really good job of buying into that and, and applying that. And, um, and, and they've done a good job. Hey, listen, I love a 3-1 homer as much as anybody loves a 3-1 homer. 
But if you don't hit them, you still have to find a way to win. And, and that's what we did today. Kelsey Dennehy, IOS TV Sports. The Hoosiers continued their win streak on Wednesday night in Cincinnati. They will face Ohio at home this weekend in an attempt to clinch their sixth consecutive series win. The Indiana water polo team was back in California competing against number 20 San Jose State University and Santa Clara University. The Hoosiers and the Spartans kept a one goal game until Louisa Downs scored three in a row in the third quarter. The Spartans came back in the fourth, but it was not enough as the Hoosiers came out with their first win of the weekend, seven to six. The next day, IU came out strong against Santa Clara, scoring eight unanswered goals in the first half of the game. They scored seven more goals in the second half and coupled with Mary Askew's 92.3 save percentage, they beat the Broncos 15 to one. The Hoosiers end the regular season with a record of 17 and 12, the most wins in the season since 2018. They will finish the year off with the MPSF tournament next week, followed by the NCAA championship starting May 12th. Now joining us to provide some insight on one Little 500 team is Riley Woodall. Riley. Hey, thanks, Sam. The Little 500 is almost upon us, and Bloomington is buzzing. Teams have been busy at the track preparing for the race, practicing exchanges, and talking some strategy. But what you see on race day doesn't tell the full story about these cyclists. I had the chance to sit down with CSF Cycling to discuss their journey to the 2023 running of Little 5. Take a look. For many Little 5 teams competing in this year's race, the goal is simple, win and stamp their name in IU immortality. But one group of cyclists say they're riding for something bigger than a trophy. We're trying to represent Christ on the track. Um, we're finding our identity in him, not um, our performance. CSF, the Christian student organization at Indiana, qualified 19th ahead of the 2023 Little 500 and came together through adversity, hard work, and a little help from the man upstairs. You know, when you're preparing for this event all year, you can put a lot of your identity and how well you do out on the track. I was on a team last year that unfortunately did not qualify for the race. And that really broke my heart um, just because, you know, like I said, of all the time we put into the race. Um, but seeing how God worked through it all, um, because I didn't qualify, I ended up with such an amazing team with these great group of guys here. Me and Kyle, we were on the team last year, so I, I was pretty close to him. We were also like both rookies and freshmen. I transferred into IU just one year ago. Uh, spring semester, my sophomore year. Heard about CSF because uh, my dad was helping look for housing. Um, and we found that there was a Christian group that had housing on campus. So yeah, we checked it out and it seemed like a really good fit. A strong bond on the track is key to success in this weekend's race. But it's the relationships built off it that make the work, time, and dedication much more meaningful. This year especially is special for us because I would say that we're a lot closer than we were last year as a team. For us to just be here and spend a lot of time with each other, uh, just that chemistry, I would say, um, it's a lot higher. A lot of what we do here is trying to build relationships. It's a perfect way to do that because of the amount of time we spend here. Um, we get to know each other really well. Um, these guys are like brothers to me. Um, and we get to spend a lot of time with these people as well. And especially with Kyle, uh, I've gotten to yeah, be really close with him and yeah. praying together and helping each other out with like the ups and downs of college life. God's plan for these four cyclists made their journey worth it. And even if they don't get that first place trophy, they won something greater, a bond that will last a lifetime. From Bloomington, Riley Woodall, IUS TV Sports. Thanks, Riley. Coming up after the break, we crown our Hoosier Highlight Athlete of the Week. And we have the latest on tennis, track and field, and more. You're watching Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. Now joining us for this week's Hoosier Highlight is IUS TV sports reporter Audrey Hausberger. Audrey. 
Thanks guys. It has been a historic outdoor season for senior track and field sprinter Alyssa Robinson. After hitting a personal record at the Louisville invite this past Saturday, Robinson has become the only woman in the track and field program to earn top eight marks in three separate outdoor sprinting events, the 100 meter dash, the 200 and the 400 meter run. Robinson picked up the PR last Saturday in the 100 meter dash with a time of 1145 seconds, but not only did she get a PR, she did so in an event that she had not competed in for two years. That 100 meter feat would place Robinson at the number four spot in the program for this event. Robinson secured her other two historic marks in the 2020-21 outdoor track season. The Indianapolis native ran the 200-meter dash with a time of 23.03 back at the NCAA East prelim round two years ago. That time placed her at the number two spot in program history. Lastly, Robinson claimed the number eight spot in the program for the 400-meter run after finishing the event with a time of 54.11. So to put all the pieces together, because that was a lot of information, that's number four in the 100 meter, number two in the 200 meter, and number eight in the 400 meter. That's all for our final Hoosier highlight of the semester. Samantha, back to you. Thanks, Audrey. This past weekend, the Hoosier track team sent 11 athletes to the Brian Clay Invitational in Azusa, California, while the rest of the team competed at the Louisville Invitational in Kentucky. In Azusa, Sarah Schmidt achieved a new personal best in the 5,000 meter race, which was good enough to earn fifth place. Camden Marshall also performed well, placing fourth in the 1,500 meter race. On the track in Louisville, Antonio Laidler continued to build upon his stellar campaign by breaking the school record in the 100 meter dash with a time of 10.2 seconds. Alyssa Robinson also took home gold with a time of 23.46 seconds in the 200 meter dash. Hoosiers continued to show their prowess by winning five field events and placing nine athletes in the top two. The team will return to Bloomington for the Indiana Invitational this weekend. Now joining us in studio is softball beat reporter Ryan Costello, who took to Andy Moore Field to highlight one of the Hoosiers' number one fans. Ryan? Thanks, Hank. The Indiana softball team is having a historic season. A key player for this roster has been Brianna Copeland, who leads the pitching rotation and is great with the bat. Her success on the field not only stems from the hard work she does, but from the undeniable support from her mother. Have you ever been at an IU softball game and heard this chant? IU! IU! And wondered who it is? Well, that's Carol Copeland, mother of star Indiana softball player Brianna Copeland. Brianna is a sophomore 2A utility player for the Hoosiers, who not only leads the pitching staff in wins, but can also hit the ball pretty well. When Brie got the offer to come play softball at Indiana University, this is what she said to her mom. All this hard work has finally paid off, and it's like, I did it, mom. We did it. The reason Brianna is even playing softball is because it's her mother's favorite sport. So I tried it out and I enjoyed it. And she was there along the way to push me every single day and encourage me. And she hasn't stopped encouraging me since, so it's been awesome. And in this case, encouragement comes from long hours and lots of gas. Despite the Copans being from Alabama and mom Carol still living there, she makes the drive to just about all IU home games, which is over seven hours. Well, I've done it so many times. It's it's easy. I don't even use GPS anymore. Last year when Carol was still working, she had a schedule of how she would make it to every game. When I was working last year, I would take off on Fridays every Friday for two months. I did it for February, March, and April. Because she loves supporting her daughter and the softball team so much, she started using some letters last season to do something to pump up the crowd. The next game, I said, I got to do something. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I got these letters right here. This is how I started. And then uh, a parent told me about to the, the end of the season that I needed larger letters. So I went and got these letters. <laughs> All right. And then I just I, I just been so excited because they've been winning and they've been doing everything. So now I have these letters. <laughs> Why does she bring so much energy at the games? I love cheering. I, I love to motivate the, uh, the team. I want them to win. I want them to believe in themselves and I want them to never give up. Not as long as Carol Copeland is there with her red, white, and from Bloomington, Ryan Costello, IUS TV Sports. Indiana men's tennis fell just short of a comeback victory on senior day against Michigan State. Our Zeke Shapiro has the recap. 
It was senior day here today at the IU Tennis Center as IU played an absolute thriller against Michigan State. The Hoosiers fell behind 3-0 very early in the match and it looked like it was going to be all Sparty until the Hoosiers in the singles made the match very interesting. Led by Luka Vukovic, the Hoosiers rallied back to 3-3 but ultimately couldn't get the job done as Sam Landau dropped the last two games to have IU fall 4-3. Yeah, I mean our resilience was great. I mean we were down 3-0 doubles in two of the singles matches. And you know, we're moments away from getting four singles matches, four singles wins, which was awesome. So proud of the fight, proud of the, the way they competed and, and stuck to, uh, stayed together, um, especially when it got tough there at the end. Yeah, I mean, I looked over like once because I don't like to like look at the score and then I saw it was 3-0 and then I saw two guys finish quick. So I was like, okay, we, we still have a shot here if I can get a win. And uh, yeah, so I was like, I had full trust that we could get back in this match and, and we did, but you know, it wasn't meant to be today. Oh yeah, it was super nice. It's uh, it's a nice feeling, you know, playing like one of the last matches on and, you know, it's it's the worst feeling when you lose, but it's a good feeling when you win, so. The Hoosiers will go on the road for their final two matches of the regular season against Penn State and Ohio State and will host the Big Ten Tournament the following week. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Zeke Shapiro. Indiana women's tennis traveled to rival Purdue for their final regular season match before the Big Ten Championships. Our Sam Brunsman has more. There's plenty of sunshine in West Lafayette as the Indiana women's tennis team took on rival Purdue at the Schwartz Tennis Center earlier this afternoon. The Hoosiers fell to the Boilermakers 4-1 and it was the slow starting doubles play that troubled the Hoosiers early. You know, I think obviously we did not play well in the doubles and I think uh, eventually that, that's the one that kind of is coming back and haunting us. You know, not being able to get that first point. I think the momentum goes their way. And, but, you know, Proud of the team because we fought until the very end. Until the very end and we had three matches that could have gone the other way. The Hoosiers only point came from freshman Nicole Teodosescu in the singles play. Our freshman uh, Nicole, you know, for her to be able to get the win right away in, in straight sets, you know, as a freshman and this is her first rival match, uh, I think was definitely a, a key factor in giving us the momentum on that. The women's tennis team will use this match as motivation for next week's opponent. This loss, um, we're going to take it as a learning. We're going to focus on ourselves, work on our uh, patterns again. I mean, it was a tough match, but you came out today. But it's, the season's not over yet, and we're going to give our best at Wisconsin. The Hoosiers will travel to Madison, Wisconsin to take on the Wisconsin Badgers next Friday. For IUS TV, I am Sam Brunson. The women's golf team closed out the regular season at the Lady Buckeye Invitational in Columbus, Ohio. The Hoosiers shot 39 over as a team and placed 13th overall. Graduate transfer Alexis Florio led the way by shooting even par and firing a 68 in the first round. She tied for 12th in the individual standings for her fourth top 15 finish of the season. Senior Valerie Clancy tied for 41st and ended her final round with a team high four birdies. Junior Dominica Bordova and sophomore Margaret Fernandez both finished tied for 61st place. The team will compete in the Big Ten Championships this weekend in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now joining us with the Candy Stripe Calendar Report is my friend, IUS TV sports reporter Brianna Baylog. Brianna? Thanks, Hank. The greatest college weekend is finally upon us. The little, the little 500 races will take place at Bill Armstrong Stadium with the women's race on Friday and the men's race on Saturday. Now let's see what all of the other Hoosier athletics are up to this weekend. On Friday, women's golf will travel to Pittsburgh to compete in the Big Ten Championships. On Friday and Saturday, the track team will host the Indiana Invitational. Indiana softball will travel to New, Jer New Jersey to play a weekend series against Rutgers. At Bart Kaufman Field, Indiana baseball will host the Ohio Bobcats for a weekend series. To conclude Friday's jam-packed day, the women's tennis team will face Wisconsin in Madison. On Saturday and Sunday, the men's golf team will compete at the Fighting Illini Collegiate in Illinois. The men's tennis team will take a trip up to State College to face Penn State. To round out Sunday, the men's tennis team has a quick turnaround and will travel to Columbus to compete against the number two ranked Buckeyes. And that is all for our final Candy Stripe calendar for the semester. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Bree. And that's our final show for the school year. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we go, in honor of our last show as seniors, 
Let's take a trip down memory lane with some of our friends here at IUS TV Sports. each other and there's just a great camaraderie and, and really it's something that you don't see very often I think in, in a lot of places that the, you know you have a senior group who's so willing to do everything and is so accepting of everybody uh, like the seniors are this year. Sam is one of the most hardworking, intelligent individuals that I have met in the media school. When we had the conversations with Sam it was we want you to be a producer you know she never really covered a big deal before she covered softball she never, you know, got her foot wet. She, she really just started junior year, right around when we, we thought about promoting her. And it was, you know, a couple of months in. And what she's done over the last year, I mean, she's grown to one of my, be one of my best friends at the media school. My favorite memories with her have been in the IOS TV office this past semester, sitting in production meetings. She's hilarious. And she always knows when to throw out a joke or when to start singing a TikTok song. She's a kind person and at the end of the day, her kindness is what has really made an impact on me. Um, I don't know if I could say my favorite memory with Hank on camera. Um, I don't think that's really allowed. My first memory of Hank was he showed up at the golf outing that, that we covered together and he was like, all right, man, you're on your own. Like, I got to go right for the IDS. I'm going to go walk around and have fun. Uh, that was the first thing uh, ever um, that Hank and I did together. and. You know, did it piss me off? Yeah, of course it did. Like, dude's like sending me on my own, but that, that's kind of Hank is, is you know, he, he's not gonna be up in your business and he, he's gonna let you do things. And, and that's one of his strong suits is letting somebody go out and really be themselves. He's just gotten so much like more comfortable on camera and he's, he's himself every single time he's on camera. And it really shows when he's on the toss up and doing panel stuff like that because he's so much fun to listen to and his personality really comes out in those types of shows. There's nobody quite like Hank and I US TV. He's somebody that uh, whenever you need anything, he'll, he's going to pick up the phone. He might not be 100% ready to pick up the phone when you need him to, but he'll be there. Um, and he's, he's just someone I'm super fortunate and glad that I get to call a friend. Audrey is one of the most determined and hardworking people that I've met at IUS TV. And, you know, Audrey is somebody who came over from print and has done a spectacular job. There hasn't been somebody, in my opinion, that's made the adjustment better than going from a writer to going to video than Audrey has. I think it's hands down. She's one of the most talented storytellers we have here. And she is just doing her best at all times. And at the end of the day, that's really all you can do, um, especially in an industry that can be down on you so much. She does it with grace, with kindness, um, and it shows in her work and it shows in her success. We are so privileged with our talent that I, I can't even like describe how great it is to have somebody like Brianna on our team and, and to be able to, 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 again, grow with her and learn with her over the last couple of years. She was just a lot of fun to report with. We were both kind of just getting started with IUS TV. It was, I think, maybe a both like second beat ever that we were on. So we were both kind of trying to figure everything out. And we learned a lot just about reporting and video stories in general. We're on that beat and for her to say, you know what, okay, I'll do it, and, and she got to cover the number two team in the country. Like, that's so special. And to have a journalist as good as Bree and as good as Audrey team up together, for us, that's a home run. And, and Bree is a huge part of that, and it was her willingness to adapt and her willingness to, to cover a beat. She didn't think she'd be covering this year. That makes her so special. Well, I mean... Well, thank you to Evan for yeah. putting that yeah. together. Wow. I think we all... Emma put it together. Or Thank Emma for Emma. putting it together, for Evan for being in the interview, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> I think we should get a chance to do an interview and talk about Evan yeah, and right? his, some of his flaws, because he yeah. knows <laughs> many of them for me. Um, but, no, I love all three of you, honestly. And yeah. this has been... This has been a great thing to work with for four years. It's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's Thanks, gonna guys, be tough. Thanks guys for being my best friends here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I now don't game. forget to follow to us camera. on Instagram <laughs> and Twitter at IUS TV Sports to keep up with all the latest in IU athletics. For our production crew behind us, I'm Samantha Condra. And I'm Hank Joseph. Be sure to tune in for more Hoosier Sports <laughs> in the fall. We'll see you then.